I'm joined now by Democratic Congressman uh, from Maryland and a member of the Congressional Black Caucus and a veteran of many a congressional fight uh, today and yesterday these days is uh, Kwesi Mfume. Congressman Mfume, it's good to see you. Thank you very much, Chuck. Thanks you know, for having me. I was revising my history. You know, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was not the first Civil Rights Act that a Congress passed, and it wasn't the last Civil Rights Act that Congress passed. And I say this because there's been nine Civil Rights Acts. Is it fair to say that we probably are going to, should we, are we at the point we have to accept that there may be multiple police reforms? And let's see what you do here, and then you may have to come back, and you may have to come back. Is that, that realism set in yet? Well, I think it's always been the case. You do what you can do when you can do it, and you learn how to win and live to fight another day. Uh, it's interesting that so many people will characterize uh, the George Floyd Justice Act as a non-starter. Uh, that was the same thing that was said in 1965 with the Voting Rights Act, with the Public Accommodations Bill, with the Dr. Martin Luther King holiday, with the American with Disabilities Act. So it's a nice way to characterize things, but it doesn't always speak to what the final uh, verdict will be. And that verdict is oftentimes shaped by message, um, by advocacy, and by compromise. So there could be several versions that emerge uh, over time, right now, I think you have to go in with the, the strongest hand and the strongest position. And Steve Horsford, our, our, our mm -hmm. chairman of the caucus, who is uh, negotiating this with the White House, understands that. We all support him. And I believe that uh, we've not seen the end of this battle. And yes, uh, we want the president to use the bully pulpit. We will fight like hell to do yeah. what we have to do in the Congress to pass it. But any other help we can get, we welcome. Is it your understanding that what separated Karen Bass, uh, Cory Booker, and Tim Scott the last time was simply qualified immunity, or were there other sticking points? Well, yeah, there was one great big sticking point, that there was no willingness on the Senate side to do anything at all. Uh, and so this idea of hiding behind qualified immunity got more attention than anything else. But Karen Bass did everything she could on the House side, uh, Cory Booker did everything he could do on the Senate side. The sticking point really was Tim Scott and his unwillingness to budge on anything, it seems like, but he certainly hid behind, in my opinion, qualified immunity. We really don't need that. We've got to find a way to have common ground here. And without that, we will just be the same kind of gridlock and deadlock that we've always been living with. I, I hate to be a cynic on this, but do you think if he runs for president, that makes it harder? to negotiate with Tim Scott, but if he decides not to run for president, that maybe it'll be easier to negotiate on this issue? <laughs> well, you're not being a cynic, you're being a realist. And I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, what's the old phrase? We uh, uh, campaign in poetry, but yeah. we govern in prose. Yep. I think you'll see a different Tim Scott if he gets out there, one that's unwilling to give up on this issue. And if he doesn't run, then there's another bite at the apple for everybody that's trying to make him realize that this is the right way to go. Hey, look, you've been, this is not your first time in Congress. You were head of the NAACP. You've, you've worked all sides of so many of these issues in the past. Is there a smaller bill you think you could get done right now on police reform? You know, one that maybe just created the database uh, across state lines. You know, I mean, my goodness, if we could just tackle wandering cops, right, like that would be progress. Well, yeah, and I don't want to get ahead of my own leadership on this, except to say uh, that change comes incrementally. And where you can get a victory, you get one. The president set a great example by using his executive order on several of those issues, the creation of the database uh, and, and other things. I think he can go further, uh, perhaps as it relates to no-knock warrants, barring them on a federal level with federal forces. But also, I think in states, there is a huge opportunity here for state legislatures to help start moving this along mm -hmm. and for all of us on the Hill, quite frankly, to kind of find a way to talk, to work our way through this and to make some sense. People want action. We just can't wait for the next situation like this to occur. If you were still head of the NAACP, how would you be handling this situation with the College Board and AP and African American Studies in the state of Florida? Well, I think the College Board, uh, to a large extent, has wimped out uh, in the face of the rhetoric uh, coming from Florida, particularly the Senate. 
and I'm using the word wimp out. That's my description. I just, when I say that, I mean, I think they could have been stronger here and held their ground. I understand some of the issues with the college board and what they thought that they had to put forward in order to satisfy their constituency. Uh, but sometimes you just have to push back. And I don't know that enough pushback occurred in this instance. Uh, I believe that history, and we had a big press conference out uh, in front of the Capitol today, uh, history is history, whether it's black history or what we call traditional American history, it's all rolled together. So you just can't say that you're not going to teach it because you don't like it. You know, in Germany, students are made to learn about the Holocaust. Uh, students in this country ought to be able to learn about slavery, about the things that were part and parcel of it, both during the time and after the time. And we ought to take a great deal of pride in the fact mm -hmm. that we talk about our history. This was not the best of beginnings for a nation. What we did to Native Americans, the, how we annexed the Hispanic, and how we enslaved the Negroes of those days, those things are real. They have to be taught. So I would just think that uh, the college board, without me telling them what to do, because they don't need my opinion, right. but they do need the opinion of their larger constituency. I think their larger constituency would argue that you cannot change history by ignoring it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.